so far we have talked about the uh, framework for using BIM okay, to uh, manage the uh, information yeah and uh, we also spend quite a fair bit of time to go into the detail okay on the different information requirements or the uh, these are uh, OIR the uh, AIR and the EIR we also talk about the uh, information deliveries okay the beam execution plan the uh, project uh, information model the uh, asset information model okay asset uh, man uh, management system and uh, I briefly touch on the uh, information exchange uh, uh, between the different stakeholders in a project, uh, this uh, delivery uh, life cycle or the different phases. Okay, you need to have a uh, consistent way for the information to uh, you know, be uh, shared or to be uh, translated or transmitted between the different models and all that. Uh, that I will be spending more detail to talk about uh, under this uh, lecture called the uh, Common Data Environment. Okay. Oh, now let's move on to uh, talk about the, this uh, ISO for BIM. Uh, okay. oh, there is a particular ISO standard for BIM called the uh, ISO 19650. Okay. Yeah, we'll be uh, talking about this uh, ISO standard. But uh, before that, uh, a bit of uh, background to what actually is uh, ISO. So the uh, benefits of the ISO system Okay, is to uh, distill expert knowledge and make it available to everybody okay, in the industry across the different countries around the whole world. Okay. So a ISO standard, there are many, many standards at the moment. Uh, yeah? Any ISO standard, it is a document established by consensus of subject matter experts around the whole world. Okay. And approved by a recognized body that provides guidance to an optimum degree for the design, use, and performance of materials, products, processes, services, systems, or people. Also, that is the general definition of uh, this uh, the ISO and the benefits. Right. So earliest recorded system of weights and measures date actually you know right up to uh, the third or the fourth millennium BC, yeah, and uh, since then the uh, standards have been uh, make the, this uh, knowledge available or uh, for common and repeated use to ensure consistency of uh, goods and services lah, yeah. Uh, key, key thing is that uh, when we exchange goods and services, okay, we want to make sure that, uh, you know, it is consistent, okay, or it is consistent, right. One unit Okay, of a particular goods, okay, yeah, when it's exchanged between one party to another party, it must be the same unit, okay, in the eyes of both parties, you see, okay, right, or the whole community, right, yeah. So, what are ISO standards, okay, or the uh, key values of the ISO standards are, okay, it is based on the universal principle of quality, safety, Reliability, interoperability, the uh, efficiency, okay, and so on and so forth. Okay, uh, it involves globally established standards or experts. Yeah, uh, there is a standard and uh, adapted by the different organizations, consortiums, okay, private or public companies, uh, around the whole world. Okay, also that is uh, the uh, values. Right, the uh, ISO standards provide a basis for the uh, organizations to develop or to improve regulations and the uh, work processes and the workflow. The uh, parties engaged in uh, BIM, uh, BIM ISO standards, okay, they are the uh, national standards bodies. For example, in Europe, okay, it is uh, this uh, Europe Stand uh, Committee for Standardization, or they call it CEN, C N for short. Okay. Uh, it will also involve uh, the various uh, universities uh, across the different countries, okay? the business schools, the consultants, uh, the companies that are chosen by the national standard bodies, the uh, ISO central secretariat. Now, uh, the ISO actually was uh, founded in uh, the year 1947. Uh, 1947. So, uh, it's less than 100 years old, uh, put it this way. Okay, 
Oh, and uh, the purpose was uh, at that time to uh, answer the basic question of uh, what is the best way for doing something, because they want to share, okay, oh, the best practices, okay, throughout the whole world, alright. So the uh, early examples of uh, ISO standard, okay, was uh, the ISO R1, okay, which is to set a standard reference temperature for industrial length measurement. Okay, or, or the ISO 6, okay, to enable photographers to select the best matching film to the light and movement speed of their subject. Okay, also there are some examples of the initial ISO standards. Uh, you can also have uh, this uh, ISO 9001. Uh, uh, so during the 80s, it was uh, very uh, well known, okay, or uh, because uh, that is a requirement for this uh, quality law. Uh, so it was re, uh, released for global quality management standard. Uh, ISO 14000, okay, or uh, is uh, released in the year 1996, okay, to address sustainability challenges or uh, to control the environmental impact of activities, products, and services. Yeah, uh, like I said, there are many many ISO standards out there. Uh, so these are some of the other you know uh, examples of uh, ISO standards. Uh, for beam, or uh, for beam. In 2019, okay, the uh, ISO 19650, la, that's part 1 and part 2, was released. Okay, oh, so, all in all, ISO has published more than 22,000 international standards in relation to the area of health, business, and technology. So, many standards has been published. So, by using the ISO standard for BIM, Okay, it will allow the building consumers to produce and use good quality beam products. Okay, it will uh, allow you know the uh, production of the uh, this uh, uh, ISO standard for beam. Okay, make it a reliable methodology. Okay, or to understand the construction value chain of uh, production process, visualization of the main stages that the building goes through, analyzing the drivers that generate the value. Identification of what processes needs to be standardized, defining the uh, operational indicators, calculating the impact of the applied standards. To give more specific examples of the changes, okay, when we are using ISO for beam, okay, you can uh, look at the, the uh, uh, these uh, descriptors here. Uh, in terms of the uh, scope of the value change for traditional projects. Okay, that is uh, not involving beam. Okay, typically we are just looking at the planning, then designing and the construction. Okay, of uh, the uh, project. But if you are using the ISO for beam, it will actually look into this and more. This is uh, looking into the whole life cycle of uh, construction, which of course includes uh, the uh, planning stage, the design stage, and the construction stage, but it also includes the handover stage, yeah, and possibly the refurbishment or demolition stage, or even right up front, the, the pre-conceptualization uh, stage. So that's why it's uh, more comprehensive in that sense, uh, when you're talking about the ISO for beam, okay, yeah. When you're looking at the products to be delivered for traditional projects, typically we are just talking about the physical building, Okay, that will be handed over after the project has been completed. But if the project includes the beam, okay, and also uses the ISO standard, not only will the owner be able to receive the physical building, but the owner will also receive the 6D beam model. So sometimes we call it the digital twin. Okay, or because uh, when we say twin, there's two, right? The first one is the physical building itself. The second one is the building in the digital world, okay? Oh, so in a common data environment, oh, so that the digital uh, model, okay, is actually a building information model, okay, with the associated uh, database of uh, this um, non geometrical you know, information, yeah? In terms of the process, for typical construction project or traditional construction project, it used to be just physical construction tasks, uh, independent, iso uh, isolated digital production workflow or uh, through the intranets and all that. Again, for BIM projects, they are supported by ISO standard, 
there will be of course physical construction tasks but on top of that you have continuous and interdependent digital production workflows okay and it will uh, happen either through uh, intranet it could be through extranet on cloud so and so forth okay in terms of the uh, stakeholders for traditional project it used to be just the clients the designers the contractors however if you are involved in a uh, beam related project then it will be uh, you know a lot more stakeholders that come into the picture you also have the clients the designers the builders or the contractors but on top of that you also have the uh, beam managers or the uh, beam coordinators and because the project is going to be handed over you are also going to hand over the digital twin then the facility managers will also be uh, playing a very important role so for traditional projects the uh, documents that the uh, you know is churned out okay while the project is uh, being completed okay it could be reports okay calculations drawings budgets okay or it could be a uh, rendering of videos from a digital model architectural model certification but if it's a beam project again supported by iso standard it will be all this and more you get the the beam models you get your budget that's a link to the beam models yeah you get the certification link to the beam models and the uh, facility management tasks yeah 